education. E-learning took center stage in recent months for students of all ages when they were sent home as grade schools, middle schools and high schools continue to weigh their own back to school plans for the fall. What happens on the college level also still playing out? Joining us now, University of Illinois President Timothy Colleen and Loyola University Chicago President Dr. Joanne Rooney. Thank you to you both for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. This week, U.S. News and World Report wrote about America's colleges and universities weighing the financial uh, risk of not reopening and also, of course, the safety concerns. What they wrote this week said, as colleges and universities across the country juggle student and staff safety, uh, loss of opportunities and loss of revenue during COVID-19, even seemingly secondary considerations, how many entrances a school has, how close it sits to community foot traffic, how food is served loom large. So a question for both of you. How are you going to safely reopen this fall? Would you like to start, John? I was just saying, go ahead, Tim. <laughs> okay. um, well, we, are, we, we keep our guiding principles. Uh, the first of all is health, safety, welfare of our students, faculty, and staff. That's number one. Number two is a world-class educational experience. So those are our commitments, and we're going to provide the best possible educational experience for all of our students. Now, how that's going to actually look will depend on, you know, on the circumstances, and obviously we're going to comply with all of the uh, needed protocols and procedures to make sure that we don't have uh, spikes in uh, infection or congregate uh, uh, efforts where you see you see the uh, infection spread. So we're going to do all of those things, uh, hallways, uh, doorways, uh, sanitation of spaces. We're going to use our space and the time dimension sensibly to provide the best possible educational experience, which is uh, basically in our genome. And uh, we'll use a mix of online and face-to-face -face instructional um, uh, capacities too as we move forward. The funding aspects are important, surely, but those are our two commitments health, welfare of the students and the faculty, staff, and, and the world-class education experience. President Rooney? Yes, and I'd echo the same. As we even showed in the spring and throughout this entire time, our first and number one consideration was the care, health, and safety of our students, faculty, and staff. And we showed how we were able to safely uh, move our students home uh, get our learning remote using the same faculty and allowing our students to successfully complete their educational mission. Looking to the fall, as Tim said, we too are looking at a combination of being able to have students on campus, but it would be done safely. It would be done following the guidance that we've been given and the data and scientific information about how best to social distance, how best to de-densify classrooms, looking at different scheduling, and also ensuring that we're able to do the kind of testing, contact tracing, uh, in support of all of those guidelines. So while we think it will be very different, uh, I echo Tim's uh, comment that the financial implications are not what are driving the decisions. It's about the health and safety, but also about really ensuring that our students can have that continuity in their educational experience and really follow their pathway to a successful education and then obviously into our communities as great community members. Mr. Colleen, let's get more specific if we can, and I'm sure you've thought this over probably late at night in your head. What happens when a student does test positive for COVID-19? Does that mean shutting down a dorm, shutting down a classroom? Um, these are delicate subjects. Parents really want to know what the specifics look like if you have them at this juncture. But no, we're going to have very clear um, uh, protocols that will be all the parents will will know about them. If if a student uh, has symptoms or has a temperature or has a, a a positive test, we we will have quarantine spaces. We'll have comfortable places for them to go and be regularly checked up on um, uh, in uh, on on our facilities. So we've already reserved space for students who may need to quarantine uh, because they test positive. So we've actually thought through many of these aspects in, in almost, you know, amazing 
detail because it's every classroom, every hallway, every building, um, and and we want to do it to ensure to reassure students and their families that they will be as safe as is humanly possible in our settings and have a have opportunity to continue learning and studying so our quarantine students will be still making progress on their on their classwork very good dr rooney your thoughts on how to deal with isolate whatever your thoughts are about someone diagnosed with covid 19 on campus absolutely that is one of the considerations that I think all of us are going through, which is as we open our campuses and have more students uh, present and also faculty and staff present, we need to have the protocols in place, not only to identify, but have those facilities on campus, residence halls or areas where we can successfully quarantine or isolate uh, persons that are having symptoms. But the other important point was and still maintain the ability for these students to engage in their education. So we'll make sure even with our on-campus classes, we'll always have an online option so that there is that ability to have that flexibility as we're following the evolving science and the evolving track of uh, this particular pandemic. Let's talk about finances. Obviously, the virus is having an impact on universities, all parts of society. Um, Loyola is projecting a $50 million uh, shortfall. Um, are you going to have to pass that, that uh, burden on to your students in order to pay for the virus? <laughs> Our students pay for their education. Uh, with the experience they're having with our faculty and our staff, that doesn't change. We're responsible and have as a community really come together to identify ways that, for instance, and we're very public about this, we have actually held off any future hiring. Uh, we have made sure that our folks that are able to work remotely have been. We have created new opportunities with emerging needs. We will need to have people that are constantly making sure that our classrooms not only have been sterilized, but there are the seating as in that appropriate social distancing and that we're maintaining the pathways and hallways and passageways. So we're gonna to continue to engage our folks in ways, but with the fiscal discipline. So again, we have watched very closely what our expenditures were. We announced a voluntary cut in salary for all of our senior leaders through our deans uh, as ways to mitigate this shortfall that we're projecting. So our students will be paying for the educational experience that they deserve and that they will get but the other fiscal adjustments we'll need to make uh, just based on how we as a community can come together and make those adjustments. And President Colleen, about 45 seconds left. Is your university healthy? Yes, our university is strong, healthy, world-class, and we're gonna, we're gonna manifest that in all kinds of ways. We're taking the same mitigating step on uh, on expenses, but we have actually created a $36 million emergency fund for our students. So rather than taking anything out of what our students were providing them more support, more resources, and we've uh, in, uh, we frozen tuition again for a sixth year in a row. We're completely committed to affordability for uh, access to a world-class educational opportunity, which is all young Illinoisans need and deserve. Well, we are grateful for your great schools and we are grateful you joined us tonight. Thank you both. Thank you very much.